Okay. Yeah. You know. I'm not that fucked to say it. Or how the hell to say it. So, I'm like really exhausted. Um, Because, you know, I do the 72 hour fast. And then on top of that, I've actually been depriving myself of sleep. I'm trying to suffer. I'm trying to suffer. And yesterday, the first, what, 48 hours of suffering was easy. But now it's getting harder in this final stretch. Um, so, um, why would you, you might ask, why the hell would you do this to yourself, Kaino? Well, I fast for healthy reasons, you know, for for health to, you know, get autophagy, which recycles your old and damaged cells. And, you know, yeah, that's good. You get this boost of metabolism and stuff. And then um, uh, it, it's, it's healthy too, you know, um, to, to, uh, I'm trying, trying, trying to freaking, whew, like, I'm so zapped, I'm, I'm totally zapped, so, what it also does is, it, uh, teaches your body to become, uh, I forget how this works, it's like one of those, you know, things with, uh, if you're, if you're farsighted, that means you can see far, or you can't see far, you know what I mean, just the, the way that we name stuff, but, uh, it, manages your insulin resistance so if you have low resistance to insulin that means you're more apt to like shoving food in your mouth whenever the hell you feel like it or i mean like a lot of that comes with stress eating and i can totally say that i've done that in the past so uh, and it it just becomes this auto mechanized way that we live our lives where we just shove food in our freaking face just because it's morning, it's noon, it's evening. You know, if you go back to the ancient way that we lived, we, you know, we we fasted for like a decent part of the day, at least 16 hours of the day, and only ate when we had the time to or when we had the resources to, right? And if you think about the obesity problem here in America, or globally even you could I mean but if you if you think globally like a lot of indigenous uh, populations outside of the United States you know these are the cultures they probably don't have that same issue because if you look at going back to the 30s when ice simple ice frozen water that was a commodity. Yeah, because if you had the the wealth to produce ice, right? Um, you were rich, you know what I mean? Because it the process of freezing water was a lot more difficult back then. So, um, and then you think about the early ice box, <laughs> right? And uh, they were small, right? They were like, you know, you could fit it in your passenger seat of your car, right? And essentially, we didn't. We only kept things in there that needed to stay in there, right? Uh, stuff that needed to be, you know, preserved for a longer amount of time. But essentially, every day, we went to the market, or we went and traded and bartered. And, I'm sorry. And so. Every evening, mothers or fathers or both of them actually went out, got the foods, came back home, prepared it fresh. And I think that's one of the other aspect of cons con consummation that we don't have anymore is eating stuff fresh. You know what I mean? Like we pick everything up from the supermarket and they're Christmas wrapped in these cellophane packages, right? And so like, we have a lost connection to our kill, to the hunt, right? So, uh, a friend of mine was telling me she went to the store. She said about seven years ago, and she said she's heard people or children say, "Like I know what chicken is. 
I know what the animal is, and I know that we're having chicken tonight. I know what the food is, but they don't. They can't place the connection to how we took these animals' lives so that way we could nurture ourselves and whatnot. So there's a great disconnect in the way that we eat. But I, I really, you know, I don't even know how I even have the energy to keep prattling on like this. But essentially, yeah, every evening you had a fresh cooked meal. You went out to the market. You got the necessary things. You know. Um, you know, look and think back in our dwellings back then. I mean, going all the way back to New York City, right? They're small. Everybody stacked up on top of each other, right? So you didn't have a lot of room. But as the years progressed, especially after World War II, when, you know, we didn't... There wasn't the shortage of uh, of metal. Ice boxes started becoming bigger. Things started becoming a little bit more fancier. And like, if you go back and look at how our society and our the, I'm sure I took it a word uh, the way we became consumers and bought into consumerism, it greatly escalated. Now, it's not unnormal or it's not unusual to see you walk into somebody's house and you see. This fucking six or seven foot tall refrigerator, two doors, right? You got stuff on the door, you got stuff on the inside, and you got stuff on the bottom. That's why America is getting fat. The bigger the refrigerators, themselves, not only fat, but unhealthy. I'm not fat shaming. Um, in fact, I love a good thick girl. But <laughs> um, health is more important, you know what I mean? You know, that's the whole aspect of it. Um, is we just stuff our homes, our cabinets, our cupboards with all this stuff. And then it also becomes, you know, this thing where you never, well, you kind of get panic stricken about running out of something. So just before it even gets to the medium point, oh, let's go out and go get more. And it becomes this hoarding thing. I have a vlog coming out talking about that. Um, it, it's it's pretty deep in detail. And I actually had to... I, I, I was just sitting here in my car while I was charging. And um, I was just writing an outline. And then when I got to putting it into my phone, into a file, it just started expanding more and more. But yeah, like... Um, sorry to veer off the train of thought, but... Yeah, so uh, that's what we do, you know. I mean, you know, you know, we start getting into freaking hoarding and whatnot. It's it's almost like each new method of consumption just leads us down its own personal downward spiral. So, getting back to the suffering. Back in 2021, I watched this uh, the Joe Rogan experience with Yanmi Park, who tells a terrifying, grueling, disheartening tale of her life, her mom and her dad, and all the other people of North Korea living under this dictator regime, this, 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 this rule. It's sad how we as human beings do this to each other. We're all the same. If you think about, you know, I'm no different from the homeless guy. That homeless guy is no different than the rich guy, right? We're, we're talking, getting out of the brass tacks, and we're talking about the human element, which is the most important factor in our everyday interactions with other human beings. We're, we're all the same. But what's been happening is that, you know, certain ethnic groups or groups lack of ethnicity you know they've uh, taken these people into you know thinking that they're they're better than them our society is greater than you so we can subdue you right so you know when I was watching this this video, I was, that's when I first was doing my 72 hour fast and I thought to myself, I said, you know what? Every time I do a 72 hour fast now, I'm going to do it for 
the people of North Korea. These people that, you know, their, their government doesn't feed them. They have to go out. They have to forage, eating worms, grasshoppers. And then there's these other tales of when Yanmi was saying that she was at this train station. And um, she saw in one day the cycle of life happen. And it's so disturbing. She said she saw... These kids playing around. This dead body. And there were rats. And you know. Be that young. Like five years old. And being around a dead body. And having like no connection. You know like no no empathy and stuff like that. That screwed up. But they, they, they were playing around with these rats. That were eating the eyeballs out of these dead people. And then. You know they get hungry after all their playing. And exerting their energy. They eat the rat, and then they get sick, and they get poisoned, and they die in the very same freaking day. Yeah. So that's one of the main reasons why I started sacrificing, you know, or, or dedicating my fast, my 72-hour fast to the people of North Korea. And, you know, it made me, like, when I, oh, man, like, I remember thinking to myself, I have no right to argue about anything. When there are people that live in conditions that are subhuman. How can we do that to our own people, right? So, the other facet of this whole thing, you know, like, I mean, it's like on, you know, in the summertime of 2022, you know, I talked about a new philosophy, a new discipline called the discipline of discomfort, which means that. The suck, whatever sucks in your life, embrace it. Because you have to realize that you have to be grateful for being alive that you can experience this. Because when shit doesn't go your way or when things go sideways and they stay that way for a good amount of time, that's an experience, right? And you are most likely going to get out of that, right? And so when you get out of it, you'll be able to recall those things Right? And say, look, I learned from this experience. I'm grateful that this happened. Like, what the hell? I've been sharing with you since the freaking beginning. All of my freaking trauma, all of, you know, my 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 neglect um, and stuff like that. You know, like, I, yeah, that's a negative thing that happened to me. But I can reach back into the past and I can take those experiences and I can share them truthfully, honestly. No walls with you all. Right? And say, look, <clears throat> I went through all this shit. It should have turned me into a fucking monster. But it, what it did was, it made me more compassionate. Made me more empathetic towards myself. Which, you know, that you might think that might be the per first person that I thought of being compassionate to. No, I, I cared less. So, I, I, I had such a poor opinion of myself. And that's why I turned to alcoholism. Right? I destroyed my body, my brain, my soul, my spirit for so many years being an alcoholic. And this coming July 14th, is it the 14th? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the 14th of July because it's been so long since I've been sober. I'm going to be making 13 years, which equates to how many years I lost. I have no memory of those 13 years. I mean, I mean, I have memory, but it's all sporadic. It's here and there. It's patchwork. Like nothing, like, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so my, one of my main goals is to actually live longer as a sober person than the years that I have lived an alcoholic. But not only an alcoholic, but living in my fucking neurosis, living in my bullshit and letting that you know, sour me. Every day I wake up, or every day so far that I've woken up, because tomorrow is not promised, and I'm going to get into that in that very same vlog I was mentioning before. I'm grateful. And today I have incredible knee pain from playing pickleball. But I'm grateful for that pain. Okay, so you might think it's like a torturous way to live, for 72 hours, but it's not, okay, so, the fasting, 72 hours, 
You know, when, when I drive by Popeye's, man, I'm like, oh, it smells so good. But you know what? I can't eat like that no more. My body doesn't like that. You know, if I do give in to that, my body will tell me the next day, you son of a bitch. How dare you do this to us, right? So it's the fasting in 72 hours. It's the clean eating that I'm doing too, right? But I mean, okay, so essentially the fasting. The sleep deprivation. Why am I doing sleep deprivation to myself? I'm doing that to trigger visions, right? And then the third thing that I'm sacrificing is uh, no, auto, no auto erotic pleasures, okay? And then the fourth thing to round it out is to do things for others, okay? Yesterday when I went to Starbucks, I got my coffee, and I, I, I think I got like, um, I, I, I took out like 40 bucks from CVS, like when I cashed out, and so when I got my coffee, the, the, the barista, this beautiful young woman, she, she gave me back my change in fives, and I said, I put my thumb down on that five dollar bill, I said, this is for the next person, and she's like, whoa, what? I was like, yeah, this is for the next person. And I said, hon, I got your coffee. You know what? Mostly, if a guy pays for another guy's coffee, they get so, like, retardedly homophobic. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, no thanks, dude. In fact, I was at Starbucks, hanging out, sitting down with my buddy Pete during the Christmas season. And, I, you know, as I said, I was giving out those candy canes and wishing people Meli Kiliki Maka, Merry Christmas. And... This guy walks by. I said, hey, buddy. I said, Merry Christmas. He goes, Merry Christmas. And I said, Cat, uh, candy came for you. He goes, he stopped. He goes, no, no, thanks. And it makes me think about, the, um, there was this uh, bit that Bill Burr, one of my favorite comedians, uh, he was talking about how, uh, I'm going to fucking botch this up, but how, um, I think he went to Subway. And he's ordering his sandwich, and the guy behind the counter asks him if he wants a cookie. And he immediately went into this self-hating homophobic state where he's like, yeah, I do want a cookie, but you don't ask me that. I told you that, and stuff like that. Because like it was almost like a cookie is like like this like soft, comforting thing, and it should be this societal norm where a man doesn't ask another man if he wants something soft and comforting. It's hilarious, man. Like, like Bill Burr and I, we come from that same generation, you know. Tough fathers, you know, tough, tough life. But, you know, you, you, you look back on it and you're grateful for the fact that you made it through. At the time, it sucked, but that's why you got to embrace the suck. So, fasting for 72 hours. Um, um, sleep deprivation. To trigger my visions. Staving off sexual pleasures. And then giving. Okay. Not, like, like not only giving monetarily too. But giving time to people. Right. And as I've repeated myself into complete obliteration. Time is the most valuable commodity we as humans have. It's the first commodity. Before we got obsessed with money. You know as... A currency, you know what I mean? And, you know, long before that, you know, we got into the possession. We got into the contract of owning things. But, yeah, anyway, I'm, 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 I'm actually just sitting here in my car. And I'm actually just waiting, I'm waiting for a freaking email. But, <laughs> I'm going to share that with you all. Um, and, you know... Earlier this week, when I started the suffering thing, I kept thinking because I was talking to my brother, and I was, you know, I was, I was, t I was talking to him about my suffering, and I said, uh, in fact, a couple friends had texted me, say, hey, hey, how's your weekend going, or how's your day going, whatever. Uh, in fact, I don't even know what the hell freaking day it is right now. And in fact, funny thing, on Tuesday. I woke up and I was freaking convinced that it was Saturday because of my suffering from the weekend before. But anyways, I told my brother, I said, hey, you know, I've been thinking about stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I was talking about the people that texted me. They're like, hey, Kaino, how you doing? I'm like, suffering good. Suffering good. And I talked to my brother this weekend. I was asking him about 
the I've never done it, but I've seen him do a flesh offering like shortly after sweat. And you know, all of these things, like even fasting, that was like I don't want to do that. If I'm hungry, I want to fill my belly, right? Why would I want to deprive myself of these things? You know, we, we we deprive so others can have, right? So I was telling him, I said, I want to learn about flesh sacrifice. And I was thinking, I know I give a lot, but inside me is this thing where it says you haven't given enough. And that's part of that warrior role. You got to you gotta give and give until it hurts. That's what my brother said. And then I took it one freaking step further. I said, but the thing is, is that if you give until it hurts and then you feel the hurt, you got to realize that you're hurt, you're in pain, but you're not dead. So you can give more. So I even went into thinking about Sundance. And I, I know I shouldn't because I haven't even given up simple flesh sacrifice yet. But... And and I'm 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 you know rightly so freaking terrified of having fucking pieces of bone stuck into my chest, me hanging up in the freaking tree of life for four freaking days, sweating and, and you know you know, suffering with no food, no water, you know, getting blasted by all the elements, right? I'm terrified of it. I I really am. But I think that's the direction that my life's going to go. And I know it's not a traditional thing for, you know, Nde or Kitua people. But, you know, I've got to reach out to somebody and, you know, just, you know, do that. Uh, just, you know, just ask them on information about that. I'm sorry, we're into the fucking 20 minute point right here. I didn't even mean for this to be this freaking long. But that's, I think that's the beauty of just these impromptu freaking run my mouth freaking vlogs. I just get a lot of stuff out. But um, I've also, uh, I, you know, this is the thing about time. I had a friend here who um, did all these ceremonies, sweat. He, he, he was able to hold his own sweat because he learned this stuff from when he was six years old. And he was talking about humblecha. And it always sounded really interesting to me, just going out into nature, kind of camping, but not camping, right? And no food, no water for four days. And you go out there and you seek your vision. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you go out there and you go out there for that. Um, and I know that even when I'm like eating, right? I mean, even on a regular day when I eat, I'm still fasting for 23 hours. And I'm feeling good and I got all this energy that I don't have at all right now. In fact, I'm actually thinking about calling it quits and just going back into the house and sleeping. But the point of suffering, right? So uh, on those regular days, I, you know, I feel so freaking good, you know, and it, um, I don't remember a freaking point I was going to freaking make. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, so even on regular days that I eat after my 23 hour fast is up, I'm still seeing things. There's this, this, this is one spirit that like bugs the shit out of me. Like when I power my phone down, he's like, Hey, turn it back on. Turn it back on. I'm like, dude, I'm trying to sleep, man. Leave me alone. Go away. Um, yeah. And you know, like when I talk about this stuff, I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about it in any way to be a braggart or to show off, or showcase anything that I freaking do. Because like I said, I'm no better than anybody, man. I give because I can give. And that's been a role that's been planted before my two baby feet, you know, um, and uh, I, I can't ignore it, if I do, I told you what the hell happens, you know, ancestors come back and they scream in my face in the middle of the night or at three o'clock in the morning, <sighs> who do you think you are, boy, what are you trying to prove, this isn't your life, okay, your life is for the life of others, and yeah, it sucks, 
but gotta embrace it. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's not like like you know, being a being a. In fact, I don't even want to even use the word warrior. Be the person who gives. I hate labels, entitlements. You know what I mean? I think that's all this bullshit of uh, self-absorption so that you can tack on to your idea of your own self-importance. Like, no, nothing. I mean, I, I'm not nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm just human. I'm I'm human, with faults, with errors, but also with insight, so that way I can stick my psychic hand into my mind, into my heart, kind of take out all of the dust and the debris and the rottenness of the things happened to me, and just flick it like a cigarette butt. Get out of here. You have no room. You have no place in this heart no more. You have no place in this mind no more. Alright, okay. I, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm so done. I don't even want to say my outro. Bye-bye.